In the 21st century, we have access to more knowledge and technology than Einstein, Newton, and Darwin did, combined. Moore's law of exponential growth does not only apply to computer processing speed, it also applies to cumulative knowledge. The internet age has unlocked an extraordinary potential inside of us. A kid in his parents' garage kickstarted the virtual reality revolution. We have witnessed money redefined by cryptocurrency. People are building computers inside of computers for fun. On a daily basis, we are reminded of how much brilliance is in the world. Brilliance not given to us by an institution or decree, no. Brilliance that is innate, that comes from within. So it should not be a surprise that our generation would produce the equation for the unified theory of everything. And we did. A single computational equation that generates gravity, the nuclear forces, and electromagnetism. We call it optimum theory. Once we understood the first principles, the other solutions followed. And we're going to walk through all of them the solutions to unified physics and the origin and fate of the universe, how matter became life, aka biogenesis, the algorithms behind the sensations of human consciousness, free will, and general artificial intelligence. Now you might think this all sounds impossible, but our parents' generation landed on the moon. Innovation is in our blood, and in the years ahead, we are going to do things that will be indistinguishable from magic. Optimum theory stands on the shoulders of giants. It built off the visionary work of Stephen Wolfram, Albert Einstein, Ray Kurzweil, Steven Pinker, Sabine Hosenfelder, Elon Musk, Richard Feynman, and others. Could optimum theory be wrong? Sure, it is a theory. But it has been tested, reviewed, and revised over 20 years, and our simulations speak for themselves. So, let's dive in. It's fitting that I explain optimum theory through the spoken word. Later I will explain the actual equation that underlines all reality, but for now, I will be using words. Words are not the most exact tools, so try and think deeper than semantics. Now, I say words are fitting because in the beginning of our species, words were all we had. In the beginning was the word. You might recall that line from Genesis, and no, optimum theory isn't a religious thing, but as a metaphor, that line is accurate. In prehistoric times, knowledge was passed from generation to generation in an oral tradition, and then in writing. For their time, words were a marvel of innovation. The word is what elevated us above Earth's other organisms. It allowed for a kind of organization and cooperation that was unseen in our primate ancestors. Words allowed us to build the pyramids and tame the Nile. Early theories of reality were plentiful among our ancestors, and they were all conveyed with the word. In one story, the universe was created by a wise raven. In another, the earth was a flat disk on the back of a giant turtle. And according to my own beloved ancestors, the universe was spoken into existence over six days with the word. But as time progressed, words were not enough for our species. We needed a new language to keep track of grain and debts owed, distances and measurements. And so a new language was developed, mathematics, a brilliant sequential language of quantities and symbols. As our languages of words and numbers became more precise, so too did our understanding of reality. Knowledge was expanding exponentially, but at the same time, it was condensing. More of reality was being explained by less. All matter and its interactions were explained by particle physics, electricity, magnetism, and light were explained by electromagnetism, and gravity was explained by general relativity. And those forces, along with evolution theory, explained just about everything that existed in our reality with few exceptions. One human lifetime ago, two theoretical frameworks were developed that most closely resembled a unified theory of everything, but not quite. General relativity and quantum field theory. Through years of research, physicists have experimentally confirmed with tremendous accuracy virtually every prediction made by these two theories when in their appropriate domains. Gravity for general relativity, and the nuclear and electromagnetic forces for quantum field theory. However, the two theories are incompatible. They cannot both be right. That was almost an entire lifetime ago. 
and advancement on the unified theory of everything had stagnated. It was almost as if there was a barrier holding back our advancement of knowledge. And it was not just the unified theory of everything that seemed to have hit a barrier. For some reason, classical mathematics could not solve how fluids work. In fact, fluid motion had been so confounding to classical mathematics that, as of 2019, the Clay Mathematics Institute is offering a $1 million prize to anyone who can find the classical mathematic equation to accurately describe fluid. It was as if our brilliant sequential language of quantities and symbols that we call mathematics, which had been so useful and able to explain so much for thousands of years, had lost its voice. And yet with each passing year, the truth becomes more evident. Mathematics in the classical sense, sequential numbers and symbols on a blackboard, it's not enough to speak the language of our universe. Although classical mathematics is extraordinarily useful, there was a missing element. But how could that be? To understand, we need to think deeply about what language, be it numbers or words, actually is. Consider how I'm speaking to you now. I'm speaking letter by letter, word by word. I'm speaking sequentially. Consider a simple math equation. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. To solve, we add each number, each distinct unit, sequentially until we reach our answer. Most computers are sequential too, although it seems like computers do a lot of things at once. Most are actually just doing one thing at a time, very fast. But the universe, the universe is not sequential. The universe does not do one thing at a time, it does an infinite number of things at a time. So to progress our unified theory of everything, we need a non-sequential language. We need a language that can say not just one thing at a time, but an infinite number of things at once. But how can a language be non-sequential? The answer is by looking at the universe from a new perspective. During the 1940s, during the dawn of the computation revolution, Los Alamos National Laboratory invented a new language that looked at our reality for what it actually is. Non-sequential and without labels. And if we hope to speak a more pure language of the universe, then we must do likewise. All that we see are simply waves through the underlying space that our brain interprets as an image and gives label to. Sound does not truly exist. A chirping bird is a wave through the air that our brain interprets and gives label to. Taste and smell are our brain's way of analyzing the shapes of the various particles that interact with our mouth and nasal cavity. To help us make sense of the universe, our brain distorts the truth through the use of labels. Strip away all the labels that our brain creates and all that we know to truly exist is a four-dimensional grid of ripples, waves, swirls and their various interactions. Our universe, all that it truly is, is movement on an infinite grid. Grid cells that automatically transfer information, cellular automata. While words in classical mathematical formulas and computer codes are sequential, label-based languages of two-dimensional lines, cellular automata is the foundational four-dimensional language of grids. By altering the rules and geometry of an automaton, we can observe all kinds of interesting phenomenon that develop automatically. As the years passed, the language of cellular automata, sometimes referred to as computational cellular automata, because it can only be spoken by specialized non-sequential computer programs, or simply computation for short. These became ever more advanced, helped along by brilliant minds such as Stephen Wolfram, who will go on to be one of the most distinguished and successful mathematicians of the 20th century. Wolfram, like Galileo, defied his contemporaries by arguing that cellular automata is perhaps closer to the actual truth of our universe than classical mathematics. While an automaton that can simulate all reality, computationally or otherwise, was yet to be found, a variety of automaton were developed that simulate aspects of our reality. Cellular automata solves fluid almost effortlessly. Not only can cellular automata solve for fluid, it can solve for perfect fluid. Now, buckle up, because as it turns out, this would be the key to everything.